okay uh, I, I know I have a lot of videos talking about sex <laughs> you would think that uh, it's all I'm concerned about but I grew up in a, in a kind of environment that was very legalistic you had all these different rules um, for the church and you know all the things you had to do perfectly right all the time you could never make a mistake on anything and then there were some things that were deemed you know um, improper to talk about that have a huge impact on your life and they just would never talk about it and so there were a lot of things that we were just kind of left to our own imagination or our own conclusions or whatever and you know then at the same time they would do things like condemn very audibly um, you know obviously things like pornography and stuff and then they just really wouldn't explain too much about okay how do you avoid pornography how do you get out of pornography any of those things you know, kind of just never mentioned um, and then there were things like masturbation there was just this this kind of air uh, that somehow um, you could just not talk about it and then people wouldn't do it I, I don't know uh, I, I still don't understand that but regardless um, I uh, I was greatly bothered as a teenager because I lived in constant grief and guilt um, nothing I ever did was good enough nobody ever accepted me and you know then I got caught into pornography and then it just made it worse you know just the shame that goes along with that and then the guilt and constant in your head it just it, it's not great uh, so it led me in a series of life searches Bible searches you know just a lot of reading a lot of studying a lot of thinking a lot of praying trying to find um, trying to find what the answer was and I will say this that some answers are very easy and some answers are very hard and some answers there are some people who shouldn't do it and some people that should now don't get off topic with that um, yes I believe that there are absolute rights and wrongs but I also believe that there are some things that are not necessarily always right or wrong um, I, I think that there's obviously both and we see that in the in the Bible as well um, but well let me give you an example so like when I my great-grandpa no, I'm sorry my grandpa on my father's side uh, drank too much way too much and then my dad drank way too much and then my brothers drank way, way too much so what we got here is some people call them generational curses some people call them uh, family sins I, you can call them whatever you like in my family alcoholism runs very very strong so after praying for many many years at, when I was younger I felt like God was telling me personally that I should not drink me personally it's not that he told me whether anybody should drink or not or whether drinking is evil or anything like that he, he didn't tell me about other people he was just I just really felt like God was telling me you should not drink not because not just because of my bat because of, of of me but how it affect others how it affect the addicts that we deal with um, and obviously how there's that that pool um, to you know to to not know when enough is enough um, some people are able to drink just a little bit and I applaud them but uh, when it, something runs that that much in my family I just kind of kind of a uh, might, might want to avoid it kind of situation so let's talk about masturbation now there are a lot of a lot of ideas going around that are just not true uh, so I felt like maybe mentioning that first would be helpful first off me medically speaking there's nothing wrong with masturbation me medically speaking from a purely scientific uh, background um, I know some people say it does something to your palms or you know warts or hair and all this different stuff. It, it, there, there's nothing to that um, science has never found any negative side effects of masturbation um, as far as that um, it seems like um, sexual releases are actually um, healthy for your body um, and that there's nothing uh, that causes harm to your body however just because something is not proven medically or scientifically to be bad for you doesn't necessarily mean that God's okay with it so let's kind of keep that in mind um, but I just wanted to address that before we really get going too far um, and then that brings us to 
an omission. So this isn't something that the Bible says, it's just something that the Bible doesn't say. And that should kind of cause us to stop and wonder why. Why doesn't it say it? The old, in the time that the Old Testament was written, um, we're talking about a span of like a thousand years. And masturbation was very well known. It wasn't like it was unheard of. It was very well known. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure people have always known about masturbation. Um, I was at a zoo once and I saw a monkey masturbating. I, I think it's something that we just kind of figure out on our own. So there, there's that, okay? Um, but here's the problem, is that it's not mentioned. So here we have literally the laws of the Old Testament. Literally a list of laws of do not do this. And on that list are marking your bodies, is uh, cutting the edges of your beard, uh, in all these different things, and yet masturbation is never mentioned. That, that kind of is interesting. Now, obviously, there, I need to stop right here. There's some people who say, because it's not in the Bible, that means that it's okay. So like, for instance, I can do drugs because the Bible doesn't specifically say do not do drugs. That's really not, not the best way to go about it. Um, there's got, the Bible has stories. It teaches by example. It's got all kinds of different stuff. Okay, absolutely. All right. I'm not trying to, trying to force the Bible to say something that it's not. But when something is that well known and the Bible doesn't even mention it, in a part that has a bunch of laws, that, that might be worth stopping and asking why. Why didn't it mention it? And then you go through the prophets, and the prophets didn't mention it. And there's no, like, condemning stories about people masturbating. In fact, in some situations, it seems like they would have been better off to just masturbate and move on. The personal opinion there. Um, and then you get to the New Testament. Some people think that the New Testament is a new Old Testament, but it's it's not. It's not a new set of laws. It's um, the early church taking the Old Testament and making applications for the new believers to help them to grow. But either way, we don't see anything in there about masturbation. Now, uh, I know that there's going to be someone who says, what about what Jesus said? Now, hold on. We'll get there. Okay. So to add to all this, there was a book that was released. Uh, uh, I believe it was released when I was a teenager. Um, it's been a while now, so I am not positive. But it was called Every Man's Battle, and they made different versions of it. Every Young Man's Battle, Every Woman's Battle, Every Young Woman's Battle. And they had all kinds of different stuff, study guides, all kinds of stuff. But the basic idea, um, they're talking about how to deal with lust and how to deal with those kinds of things. Great. I've actually heard him speak, uh, the, the writer of the book, at I think his name's Fred Stoker. I'm not positive. Um, but anyways, I heard him speak. He's a very nice guy. Um, a little rigid, but really nothing wrong with that. Um, uh, and he talked about how his son had never had never masturbated before marriage. And some of the people who I was in college with, they really had a fit with that. I, I didn't really see what the issue was. Um, I think maybe because <laughs> they couldn't stop masturbating, so it upset them, I guess. I don't know. I, I really didn't see it as a bad or a good thing, you know, hey, good for him, you know, whatever. But the idea in the book was that they had an entire chapter of masturbation. And I remember reading it as a, as a kid and thinking, so it's my fault that I have sexual urges. So I have to suppress my sexual urges. And then from other things as a kid, I was taught, you know, that you had to suppress your emotions. You couldn't feel angry. You couldn't feel sad. You couldn't feel anything. You had to be a robot all the time. And, uh, you know, all the stuff that God would get mad at you if you got mad at him. That God would somehow destroy you know, so many different things that I heard of as, as a kid about God. And when I actually started to read the Bible for myself, it was just completely different than I expected. And to me, that's very encouraging. The idea here is don't feed the lust monster and the problem will just be resolved. So basically, if you stop looking at things with your eyes um, and thinking of letting them go in your head, that the issue will just completely resolve itself. But 
that's extremely naive. See, sexuality is natural. We were created as sexual beings. Now, I know life is not all about sex. For those of you who have been married, you know. You, you As a kid, you think that marriage is all about sex. But when after you got married, you realize that sex is only about that much of your marriage. Marriage is mostly sacrificing yourself for the betterment of the other person. Now, sex is really just the um, another expression of that. You are becoming vulnerable for the sake of another person and for the sake of their pleasure. And in the confines of a healthy relationship, sex is very rewarding for both people. But the problem is, is when things like pornography get involved and addictions and male dominance or female dominance, it, it just kind of messes with that relationship. Or when there's a lack of commitment, uh, when there's um, frayed commitments, like for instance, somebody was divorced or somebody's committing adultery, all these different examples. It's really, really intense and pleasurable at the time, but then you're left with a lot of regret and it just changes you in a way that's not good to be changed. So that was my main problem with that every man's battle when I when I when I read it before is you know I haven't read it in years so I won't be able to give you any quotes or anything but just the idea that it left me with basically if I have a desire to masturbate it's my my and masturbation is definitely a sin and so it's just it's it's my uh, my failure uh, and I really felt like that was so unfair God why did you make this from like why did you make me like this and then I started have this idea. God, why, why don't you just take this from me? In fact, I, I know a lot of a lot of gay people who have prayed something very similar. God, that you just remove this from me. Now, I went through a time when I was a teenager, um, budding sexuality and everything, where I went through a kind of um, by curiosity, I guess you would call it. But here's the thing that I didn't find out until years after that. It's actually very common for teenagers to have these kinds of curiosities and, and think that they're attracted to the same sex. It's something that, that happens for a span of years, and then as their body continues to mature, it usually works itself out. Unless there's abuse and that kind of things, in which case that's a whole different ballpark. Now, um, with that being said, this is another reason why it's a really bad idea to let your let a teenage teen, to let a teenager um, have a sex change. First off, their reasoning is not fully developed, and then second off, it might be a passing kind of thing. You, you really don't – your sexuality really is, is kind of liquid and fluid um, for, for your teenage years, and it's best not to put too much stock in it. It's also best not to get too into sexual relationships at too young of an age. It's just you, your brain is incapable of, of that kind of stuff, and so when you partake of it, it, it kind of just – it messes with you. And the thing is, it's very deceptive because it feels like, oh, I'm just having a good time. But then, like, as you get older, you start to realize how this has warped the way you think. Now, I know that there's going to be some kids inevitably who watch that and say, you don't know what I'm talking about. But remember, I've been a kid before, too. And, you know, <laughs> everybody's been a kid. And I remember what it was like. And uh, anyways, so now I sound like an old fart. <laughs> anyways, um, so then another part that is often brought up from the Bible, is a story in Genesis 38. And there's this guy who uh, has his son marry this woman, and he ends up dying. The, the, the son ends up dying. And so then, according to the custom of the time, the next son, youngest son, the, the younger son, the, so the second son, would then take that guy's wife and try to get her pregnant, and the child that she um, would have would be considered her um, his brother's child. I think you understand what I'm saying. But he doesn't want to do that, and so every single time that he has sex with her, he pulls out, and the semen goes on the ground. Now, it's this is something that they oftentimes don't tell you, but um, pre cum can actually cause pregnancy. So you don't act, if pulling out really doesn't work all the time. So there, there's that. But that's just kind of a side note. With that being said. Um, this really has nothing to do with the conversation about masturbation. I don't even know why people bring this up in conversations about masturbation. That's not the issue. The issue was he was withholding honor and offspring from his dead brother. And he was failing 
to fulfill the law, and it was all about him. And also, that was shaming the, the woman as well. So you had this guy who was doing something very evil, very evil at that time, very evil. And uh, so God killed him. So that has really no basis for the argument of, about masturbation or not. So I just want to get that out of the way pretty, pretty early off. Another one that's brought up is in Matthew chapter 5. Jesus, I mean, right? Yeah, you're bringing up Jesus, that, that kind of, that's your ace in the hole right there. But the problem is, is I, I'm concerned that it's a misuse of that. Um, if you've read the Gospels at all, you know that Jesus is oftentimes not literal in the things that he says. And he's oftentimes says things that are very, um, very hard to understand. Uh, some things that he say, for instance, made it sound like he was um, teaching cannibalism. Some things taught like he was talking disrespect, disrespecting your parents, all kinds of different stuff like that. And then you have Peter, or I'm sorry, Paul, come along later and say, in the last days, people will, you know, be disrespectful of their parents. And it's like, oh, but Jesus just said, see what I mean? And so you have all these like. It almost sounds like conflicting if you think that all the Bible is literal all the time and you have to take it you know, like that all the time. You get these messages that appear to be conflicting because you're just misunderstanding what's being said. And I, I think that that's kind of what's happening in Matthew chapter 5. So Jesus says, you know, you've heard it said that if you commit adultery, you know, this is bad. And, you know, the law talked about that. But now, I'm going to tell you something else. If you look at a woman with lust in your eyes... Um, you've already committed. So there's there's a few things. There's somewhat of a somewhat of a uh, my, this shirt is kind of rubbing on me. I don't like it. Um, there's kind of obviously the issue of is he saying you're if you're lusting for after women, it's going to be inevitable that you do have sex with her. It doesn't look like that's what he's saying. It it looks like he's talking about when you when something's going on up here. Um, that's itself a sin. But there's also another possibility that he's talking about um, enticing a woman to sin. Um, so there, there's that. Um, and I'm just going to leave that for people more qualified than myself. Um, but either way, regardless of how, of how you uh, interpret that passage, um, the main message is that it is against lust and it's against, against evil intent. Um, with that being said, it doesn't ever in there say that masturbation is wrong. It says that lusting is wrong. It, it, and this is kind of a theme of the Bible, talking about lust and that kind of stuff. It, it's, not, it's also not teaching that having a sex drive is wrong. So let's kind of keep that um, reminder in a, any discussion that we have that that passage by Jesus actually doesn't say anything against masturbation. So then there's – now it's that, we, we've talked a little bit about introducing the idea of masturbation not being bad. Now let's go to the other side and look at the, the warning things that we got to get through. First off, if you're having problems with lust, let me just kind of give you some pointers here. First off, abstaining from certain types of activities, um, like going to bars, for instance, uh, especially some of the bars that I am aware of uh, <laughs> where sometimes things happen right there. In full view of people, um, or um, different shows like maybe shows that have um, gratuitous sex, like for instance Game of Thrones, um, or certain music where they talk about all kinds of you know sexual activities, um, or uh, different art. This can be like anime or hentai. It can be like um, I mean um, art that causes sexual yearnings in you. <laughs> you get what I'm saying. Um, those kinds of things will make it easier to control uh, uh, control lust if you abstain from those things. So there, there's that. Um, and if you're having a hard time, I would always start with what are you putting in? Because uh, without a doubt, the things that you put into your mind is going to come out somewhere. Um, y you can't just be unaffected. Like, oh, I can, I can, I can watch porn and it's not going to change me. I can watch the show even though it's wow, and not be affected. You know, I can listen to this music, musician who's always talking against God and against religion. It's not going to affect me. But that's just not true. The things that we listen to, the things we watch, these things inevitably do change us. So then there's the also the conversation that comes up anytime you're talking about masturbation, pornography. Now, when I was a kid, it was just assumed that pornography is wrong. But now we're reaching a whole new 
level uh, where people are doing it and they're actually making fun of people who are trying to get off of it. And hey, there's nothing wrong with pornography. It's, it's a victimless crime. But here's the thing. First off, our conscience tells us right away that, it, that it's wrong. So there, there is that. Um, and then there's also this, that looking at pornography is not a victimless crime. I will mention just a few of the things. Okay, first off, uh, looking at uh, pornography and, and pornography searches, pornography websites, looking at porn, that kind of stuff, it, it is one of the leading causes of sex trafficking. When you watch porn, you are literally encouraging the sex trafficking trade. Oh, well, I'm not responsible. You cannot honestly turn your eyes away from that. People, there's a demand. You are feeding to that demand. You are responsible. It, you are no longer responsible if you're no longer actively involved. It actually is another thing that pornography does is lust when it's satisfied is never satisfied. Lust when it is satisfied is never satisfied. What I mean by that is the more you cave into your um, your deep dark cravings, the more you're going to have deeper and darker cravings. It's not uncommon, for instance, for people who start looking at porn, they get into hardcore porn. They get into incestual porn. They get into bestiality. They get into it's like a progression, and uh, eventually, what happens is rape porn and that kind of stuff um, starts to get more and more popular. And it may start with like, let's say, for instance, hentai, where it's you know tentacles and stuff, but then eventually, it oftentimes goes a step past that, and you're having people who didn't have fathers around, and don't know how to control their sex drive or even that they can. Hey, if I'm horny, that gives me the right to indulge. And they've never seen anybody else do it, so they just assume that this is natural. And they don't know how to treat women, and so they just think that women like it rough because in pornography they like it rough. So therefore, pornography is the golden standard of what a woman really wants. And then you have people just enacting what they see and you see abuse happening. You see verbal abuse, you see physical abuse, and you see these kind of, you know, um, uh, bad behaviors that are exempted as okay just because, well, we were horny at the time, we were sexually aroused at the time that we were doing that, so that makes it okay, and it's, it really doesn't. Um, with sex, it really has to be, is your partner okay? Are you doing things for their benefit? Um... Then also there's the obvious thing that you are listing after a real person and it, when you look at things on a screen It sometimes deadens your, deadens your emotions, but that's a real person. That's somebody's daughter that, that that is somebody with their own hopes and dreams And I'm pretty sure that when they were a little girl or a little boy that they didn't say hmm I think that I want to be a porn star and I want people to see me as a piece of meat and nothing else And I want people to treat me um, Not like a real person. I, I don't think that that's really something that goes through their heads um, looking at pornography causes physical and mental problems. Um, I'm sorry, physical and emotional problems. Um, some examples of that would be um, erectile dysfunction on the physical spectrum, things like that. Um, emotional problems, oh, don't even get me started on that. Um, there's just a lot of things that there. I could really go on and on about that, but you can search that out for yourself. Um, another thing is looking at por uh, porn causes betrayal. If you are in any kind of a committed relationship, they may say, oh, let's watch porn together. But even if they've been deadened to it, there is a certain amount of hurt that comes with that. Some things your partner will offer to you because they love you. But if you take that, take that, um, it will crush them and kill them a little bit inside. So re remember that. Um, Another th problem with pornography is it causes fake expectations. This is what sex is like, but no, it's not. Um, you know, if if I do this, then uh, she's going to do this, and it's like, well, eh, not not really. Um, she she wants me to do this. And it's, no, no means no. See, there's a lot of a lot of young boys and men that don't know that no means no. Oh no, she she really wants this. I'm giving her what she wants. It's like, no, really, you're not though. Um, I know that everybody thinks, oh man, I want a bad girl. But here, here's the thing about bad girls, and you have to remember this: that's a lifelong, a, a, a lifelong time of being disappointed, of caving into little um, conscience problems, of being mistreated, of uh, for years and years and years, and this is and this is the result of that. 
be careful with that. You 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 got a real person there. Um, and another problem with the pornography is for a lot of people it is their sex education, and it's a sex ed education that is not true. So for instance, about uh, different relationships that are are totally fine. You know, hey, yeah, uh, people people will never know. You, you'll always get caught. It's just a matter of time. Um, it will always have implications. It's just a matter of time. Just because you did it once and you haven't yet been caught doesn't mean that you're just off the hook. So remember that. Um, no, uh, having rough sex is not going to have no uh, side effects. Um, you see things like, for instance, fisting, which is extremely dangerous uh, to whoever it's done on. And, you know, then you try and do this to somebody off of a screen and in real life and it causes massive amounts of pain for them and a lifelong damage that they can never recover from that should affect you and the problem is, is that people who look at porn it doesn't affect them anymore they become deadened to it they become deadened to the fact that this person exists for their and they have their own desires their own passions it becomes all about you and you just feel hollow and the thing is you don't even realize that you feel hollow until you stop looking at porn but you don't feel the need to stop looking at porn. Even if you did want to stop looking at porn, you can't because it's like it's it follows the same cycle of, of of pornography. I mean, sorry, of addiction. Here is your pleasure basis. This is pleasure. This is no pleasure. When you start off with an addiction, it's always somewhere in here. Man, that feels great. And then you hit a lull. So then you do it again, and it makes you feel better, but not as good as it did the first time. And eventually, it just keeps going down and down and down and down until finally, you're doing it out of out of habit or out of behavior or out of self-medication or whatever, but it's actually not even bringing you the same level of joy and pleasure that it once did. So then you go to a new level of pornography. You go to a new level of, of distraction, be it um, addiction with drugs or, or alcohol or, or just uh, suicide or whatever it is that, that you think is going to make you happy. When all, when the problem could be resolved by simply addressing it rather than sidestepping it. Um, and like I already said, pornography causes mimicking, which is when you see something and you try to copy the behavior down. And oftentimes it's not a good behavior. Like, oh yeah, talking dirty. I'll call my wife a hoe. Yeah, this is going to be great. And it's like, yeah, your wife might not be okay with that. Your partner might not be okay with that. Just kind of... Maybe there should be a dialogue that happens first. But here's the thing. When you say, hey, I have this... Um, this fetish of, you know, people getting hurt. That's not, that's not healthy. If you enjoy seeing people hurt and that causes a sexual arousal for you, that's really a problem that you, you should definitely see a psychiatrist about. That's, that's not a healthy uh, thing. And I, and I know that there's been popular books and movies. That, that's not actually normal. That's, that's not normal. It's normal if you look at porn all the time and um, have never been in a committed loving relationship. But for the rest it's not, though. So, um, one more thing. There are healthy and unhealthy expressions of masturbation. What I mean by that is this. When you are causing physical harm while you're getting off, this is not a good thing. If you are masturbating more than once a day, there, if it's something that, that really gets to be you know, just a constant thing in your life. Like, for instance, well, when I was a kid, I got into pornography when I was nine years old. Nine years old. Yeah, if any of you have kids, think about that. You're nine year old looking at porn. Wow. Um, and I started masturbating before that. I was masturbating at the age of eight. So we're talking about really. Wow. You know, this is this can happen young. And it became. I, I always had problems sleeping. I was always afraid of. Uh, always afraid of sleep. Um, anxiety and depression, and it was my coping me mechanism. Every single night, I would feel extremely anxious and that kind of stuff. And I would masturbate every single night to go to sleep. That would be my my fix, my my um, what made it where I could go to sleep. And that's not really healthy. There, that that's something that that needs to be, excuse me, needs to be addressed, needs to be figured out. What's going on there? So there are healthy and unhealthy expressions of masturbation. If if you have to masturbate every single time that you get nervous, and you're getting nervous all the time, for instance. This is this is something that don't be afraid, but definitely um, see into what kind of help there is out out there for this. Um, I know it's kind of embarrassing to talk to somebody about it, but remember that 
Google searches really won't give you that much. You'll have a bunch of opinion pieces. I think it's okay to look at pornography because I think it's okay. Well, great for you, but what about science? So uh, there's another passage that's worth looking at is in 1 Corinthians 7. Not, uh, 7. He's talking about marriage and that kind of stuff. Uh, Paul is. And um, in 9 he mentions that if, if you cannot control your lust, then, then by all means get married. You know, and so there's a few things, a few points I want to make. The first off, you don't have to get married. There's some people who think that if you are a Christian, you have to get married. You don't have to get married. The Bible talks about that. The Bible, Jesus himself talked about celibacy and how it, it's totally okay. Uh, some people are called to be celibate. That's fine. Not, and, but that goes both ways. You don't have to stay single either. I know some. I know some people bring up the thing about well, Paul says better to uh, to not get married. Well, that's a whole other conversation for a whole other day. But my point being, the Bible, God is totally fine with with either option. You can get married or you can stay single. For some people, it'll be really easy to stay single, and for some people, it'll be really easy to stay married. Um, for instance, I, I was made for marriage. I'm not saying I'm the best husband in the world. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that um, I am I am totally okay with um, my life not being all about me. Totally okay with that. But I'm, I'm also uh, into kids, so I'm totally okay with my kids having a primary part of my life. Some people are too selfish to have kids. That's that's fine. I'm, that's fine. Um, another thing is, if sex is really such a big deal for you, then by all means get married. I mean, don't 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 constantly cause yourself to sin. See, oh, I have to have sex, but I can't have sex, so I'm just going to keep masturbating, and I'm going to feel guilty. I wish I was, I was married. I can't be happy. Here's the thing. If you're not happy single, you won't be happy married. Uh, I hate to rip off that band-aid, but that's just how it's going to work. And remember that passion does fade. Love and lust and all, they, they, they fade. I mean, really, it does. It's just an emotion. It'll come and go. Um... Love is more about action anyway, so don't really, don't be too concerned about feelings. Oh, well, I just feel like I need her. It's just a feeling. I mean, it's not the end of the world. You don't have to indulge. Um, another thing about this is, well, so when I'm married, what do, when you're married, take your desire with your wife. Now, I'm not saying force her into sex, and some people have misquoted the Bible saying, the Bible says that my wife has to have sex with me every single time. Mm. And that's the problem of not really reading the Bible, but just reading the Bible. No, the Bible does not say you can rape your wife. Let me just nip that in the bud. Anyways, um, but if if you're married and you have a desire to masturbate, masturbate while thinking about your wife. There's nothing wrong about wrong about that. And I know some people have taught it's wrong to lust after your wife. Well, let me just kind of think about that for a second. Then that would mean that when you're having sex with your wife, you can't be into it. And God gave us a whole book of the Bible called Song of Solomon that says, hey, it is okay if the man or the woman is into it. Totally fine. So let's kind of remember that. And uh, I do, I do want to say this. Um, I, I heard sex compared to having a cup of tea, and I will I will repeat this because I think it's great. If somebody asks you for a cup of tea, you make them a cup of tea. If somebody says, no, I would not like a cup of tea, you do not force them to have the cup of tea. If somebody asks for a cup of tea and you're making it, and then they say, I no longer want the tea, they don't have to have the tea. It's the exact same principle with sex. Well, she said she wanted it. Maybe you misunderstood, and either way, she changed her mind. So just remember these things once again. So back, back to this. There's a lot more that could be said here, but the moral of the story being um, it's, okay to, it's okay to be in a relationship, especially if you have that high of a sex drive. Um, and if you uh, think that masturbate, if you cannot in good conscience masturbate without lusting after somebody, um, or if you think that masturbation is wrong, um, which leads me to the back to the thing that um, I was saying at the beginning of the video, where uh, sometimes th some things are wrong for certain people. Masturbation is not wrong, but if it's causing you a problem with your conscience, or you are not able to separate your, your lusting um, uh, for for this 
you know, for a person with masturbation, if you're not able to separate the two and it's becoming a sin for you, well, then I would definitely say, hey, don't do that. Um, so what happens if you cannot, fa cannot find a spouse? Well, let me just kind of say this. One, there is no one out there for you. It's, it's not like, you're, oh, well, this is the one. I might miss the one. No, the, that, that's not a thing. This isn't a Disney movie. Um, uh, there's so many people who have done stupid things because they might be the one. I think they're the one. Oh, goodness, goodness, goodness. Stop watching Stop watching Disney to figure out how, who you should be with. Um, a second thing is don't set out on a mission to find a spouse. If you find one, great. But don't make it your mission in life to find a spouse. It'll get to be where you only see the opposite sex as opportunities for a relationship. Oh, they'd make a good husband. Oh, they'd make a good wife. No, that's not great. So, and that. So, what do you do if if um, you can't find anyone to be in a relationship with? Well, here's the thing. Then don't get in a relationship. Don't rush it. Well, what do I do about my sex drive? When Paul said, if you can't control your lust, go ahead and get married. There's the implication that the person you're lusting for is a real actual person that is in front of you. In other words, it seems like he's not condemning masturbation. In other words, if you feel like you have to get a release, then get a release. There is nothing wrong there. But the problem is, when you're lusting after someone, which again, more could be said about that, but I'm really having to limit my my discussion. A lot of things, things are um, kind of going a little bit longer anyways, and I really want to wrap this up. Um, and then the third thing that, uh, on this last slide that, that's worth mentioning well, I, I'm getting kind of – I'm going to the last point before I hit the middle point. Um, not every problem has immediate fixes. If you are married and your wife won't have sex with you, here's the thing. Love her more than your own satisfaction. Don't try and guilt trip her. Don't try and force her. Work on whatever is causing her to not want to have sex or not be able to have sex. Sometimes people just can't have sex like for physical reasons like cancer and different things. In which case, be loving. Masturbate. That's fine. I, I guarantee you this. If you tell your wife, look, I, I, I had sexual desire. And, you know, with that being said, there's so many things that I want to say. Anyways, if you tell your wife... I had the sexual desire. I didn't look at porn. I masturbated. But it, I masturbated about you, and you know, there, there's got to be some kind of a, a conversation that happens. Um, but oh boy, there's just so many different things that could be said about this. Um, I'm really having to limit my conversations because this is this is this, I'm going too long. Not every problem has a media, has an immediate fix. And you need to just keep loving your wife, keeping there for her. Sometimes people are are attracted to the idea of having sex. They think that it's somehow going to be this world-changing thing. And when I had sex for the first time, I was surprised by – it was good. And I'm not saying anything against it. The first time I had sex was with my wife and the same wife that I've been married to my whole life. And it was good. I'm not complaining or anything, but I had built it up so much. And it wasn't what I thought it would be. Now, once again, I'm not complaining, but it wasn't what I thought it would be. And there's sometimes that people are, are lonely or whatever, and, oh, if I just had a person, I'd be happy, in the, or if I just could have sex. And you kind of build it up to something that is not real. Masturbation is a lot simpler than sex. Um, with sex, you're not just sticking your thing into another thing. It's this kind of interaction between souls. And... That sometimes get in, gets in the way of your habit. So, sometimes, for instance, you're just going to want to get off, and your spouse is going to want to hug. They're going to want to kiss. They're going to want to be intimate. See what I mean? And with real sex, with real people, there's kind of that inconvenience of it where it's it's a real person here with real desires. So remember that. Sometimes you, it's...
it's the idea that you're in love with, not actually the person or the thing. And uh, there, so there's that. But anyways, let's go to the middle point, which is at my actual last point. If you show your wife love, put her desires first, and treat her with respect, sex will be very fulfilling. It will be. Not only that, but if you do that, she'll actually want to have sex with you more. Um, but like I said, if there's something that um, is preventing you guys from having a committed, loving relationship, that needs to be addressed. Definitely needs to be addressed. And um, there needs to be dialogue. There needs to be um, forgiveness. Don't even mention the word the word divorce. This needs to be something that you work through. And really, don't act like a child. Oh, well, she's not giving me sex. So you're going to divorce her? Like, that's a little bit over the top. And I think that that's really the, where I'm going to have to end it there. The more could be said, but... I mean... At this point, you get what I'm saying, and it, there's a lot of stuff to process here. Um, but yes, if, if something if something's up, it's okay to masturbate. Just don't look at porn, and uh, think about your wife when you're doing it. If you're not married, don't laugh less after someone. I mean, this isn't this isn't uh, real complicated. So in 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 summation of all these different things, as far as I can tell, there's nothing wrong with, wrong with masturbation. And there's no biblical warrant for it either. If you have a problem with it, then don't do it. 